Hello everyone. <laughs> we are back. Hello classmates, students and friends. Welcome back again to my vlog. This is Angel Shares. Rugs up. How catch it is, right? Okay, anyways, uh, yun nga, uh, meron na naman tayong panibagong pag-uusapan ngayon uh, patungkol ulit sa usapang pangkasaysayan o ito ay mga, uh, ang paksa natin mga pag-uusapan ay mga paksang ukuls, 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 ukuls sa kasaysayan o history. So, nung nakaraan, uh, pinag-usapan lang natin kung ano ang kahulugan ng uh, kasaysayan or what is history. Um, this time, since nabanggit ko nung nakaraan na there are two important variables or components in studying or understanding history at yun ay ang uh, role ng historian at ang pangalawa ay ang kanyang uh, facts, sabi nga ni E.H. Carr na nabanggit ko nung the other vlog or yung tinatawag natin na sources or in Tagalog or Filipino we call it batis. Batis is b a t i Yes. So ngayon, pag-uusapan na po natin uh, ang historical, historical sources. So pagkatapos po nitong vlog na to ay malalaman po nyo, mas maintindihan po natin kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng historical sources at ano yung dalawang category or types or kinds of sources ng uh, historical sources. At uh, somehow, eh, matackle din po natin ang ang importansya or kung gaano ba ka-importante ang pagkakaroon ng sources. Okay po, so without further ado, uh, uh, hi, okay, nakaka-relax naman yung music na yan. Actually, this is my picture. Uh, I've taken this picture uh, in Tagaytay. When was this? I think this was in 2020. Aww. Okay, anyways, <laughs> going back. So, dito na po tayo, no? Sa atin pong uh, discussion, isa pang uh, nakakaantig na sounds, hinaan po natin kasi magkakaroon na po tayo ng discussion or discussion. Okay. So, an uh, uh, sabi ko nga, uh, pagkatapos ng uh, video na ito, ay mas maintindihan po natin ang uh, ang ibig sabihin ng historical sources at ganun din po uh, we would have to know no the two categories or uh, two main types or two main kinds of uh, sources that historians use not just historians uh, also um, journalists and even writers of history um, those authors of textbooks they're also using these historical sources so we would know these types of historical sources but we have to know first what is uh, a historical source so this is actually uh, coming from the book of Howell and Pervenier I just hope that I'm uh, correct in pronouncing the uh, surname of a uh, Pervenier um, from their book from reliable sources and introduction to historical method so sabi nila uh, historical sources these are objects from the past or testimonies concerning the past on which historians depend in order to create their own depiction of that past. So, nabanggit nga natin, ang mga historiador, hindi sila makakabuo ng kanilang kwento without the sources or their facts that they would be using. Because I told you last time, if they would have to write uh, the story of, uh, uh, of, of a certain past event, um, they cannot just uh, immediately or uh, write uh, something about that significant event without using um, historical sources. So, kailangan nila ng mga, ng mga informasyon patungkol sa event na yun. Lalo tigit, wala naman sila doon. So, kailangan talaga nila ng mga informasyon, uh, mga proweba, mga ebidensya para sila ay makabuo ng kanilang konklusyon ng kanilang interpretasyon ng kanilang kwento tungkol sa binabanggit na event. Alright? So, yun po, no? Kailangan nila ng historical sources for them to recreate, reconstruct, uh, reimagine, and 
of, of all those things that they would be doing, then they would have to come up with their own interpretation or their story about the past. Okay, now uh, according to Anthony Brundage uh, from the book Going to, Sur- to Going to Sources, ang sabi naman niya, historical sources are tangible remains of the past. So if you say tangible remains yung uh, nahawakan. So I think uh, what Anthony Brundage um, meant by this ay ito yung mga objects kung saan nahaw of course nahawakan mo siya so pwedeng ang pwedeng libro pwedeng manuscript pwedeng mga artifacts no pwedeng mga ruins ang uh, pwedeng maging example or halimbawa tinagalog lang ng uh, tangible remains of the past so kailangan ito para sa pag-iinterpreta at pagsasakwento na ng mga historiador or historian in english all right Now, um, in historical sources, meron dalawang kategorya ng, uh, ng uh, batis or sources. Now, I would have to enumerate this too. But actually, in other accounts, marami actually classifications or katog- categories or classifications, I should say, of uh, historical sources. But mainly, sa lahat naman ng historiador, ito yung mas ginagamit nila. No? Ano ito? So, we have one primary sources and then the other one we have secondary sources primary sources and then the secondary sources so mamaya malalaman natin ang distinction ng dalawa pero una muna alamin natin kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng primary sources primary sources so sang ayan nga sa tingnan natin na dito sa ating uh, slide no what are primary sources okay so yun yung tanong Now, the answer to this, according to the book of Luis Gutschak, Understanding History, a primer, uh, uh, a primer, a primer, a primer, to, uh, a primer of uh, historical method sa kanyang libro, no? sabi niya, these are testimony, or testimony of an eyewitness. So, pag sinabing testimony of an eyewitness, um, ikaw, nakita mo, o, oh, kunwari, ikaw yung eyewitness, na, 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 nasaksihan mo o nas- eyewitness nga di ba nasaksihan mo o nandun ka dun sa event na pinangyarihan ng event na pinangyarihan ng 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 uh, uh, pinag-uusapan nating event so uh, let's just say uh, a person who is on that sig- who was at that significant event at yun yung pag-uusapan natin yung event na yun ay yung tao na yun ay nandun at nag nagsulat siya ng manuscript or nagsulat siya ng kahit anuman uh, could be a letter um, describing ano yung nangyari dun sa event na yun, that person could be considered as an eyewitness so kung anuman yung sinulat niya sinabi niya ito ay masasabi na uh, primary source kahit yung mga kung nirecord niya ito may recorder siya nirecord niya um, vinidyo niya ta- o kaya Uh, mismong nandun siya, tas kwinento niya, that person is considered to be a primary source. So, kunwari, si Jose Rizal nagsulat ng uh, love letter niya kay Josephine Bracken o sa mga naging girlfriend niya, then that letter is considered to be primary source. Lalo tigit kung ang pag-uusapan natin ay ang uh, paano ba magmahal ang isang Jose Rizal or the, live, the love life of Jose Rizal, then that love letter is considered to be a primary source. Okay? Now, another one na ibig sabihin ng primary source, uh, ito rin ay yung mga gamit kung saan, o ito yung isang bagay kung saan na-produce ito nung panahon na pinag-uusapan natin. Or in English, this is a, uh, a primary source must have been produced by a contemporary of the event it narrates. So, uh, para mas maintindan natin, magbibigay ako ng sitwasyon. So, sabihin natin na nung panahon ni Jose Rizal, nang siya ay nakulong sa, sa Fort Santiago, and then uh, may mga bisita, pupunta doon. So, pagpupunta ang mga bisita bago makapasok at mabisita nilang isang Jose Rizal, let's just say there's a logbook there. Then, that logbook, those visitors would have to write their names before they could um they could visit Jose Rizal. So, that logbook is considered to be a primary source kasi 
yung logbook na yon ay nagawa, na produce ito at ginamit ito sa panahon na ating pinag-uusapan. So that logbook could be, could be considered as a primary source. Pwede rin na yung selda mismo na pinagseldahan o pinaglagian ng isang Jose Rizal nung siya ay kinulong, that could be considered as a primary source. Kasi that selda, kumbaga na witness niya, nandun siya, yun ang um, pinangyarihan nung event na yun. And also the guard who was there, who witnessed, so let's just say may mga gwardiya si Bildo na nagbabantay, malamang mayroong nagbabantay sa kanya, yung mga nandun ay mga... Uh, halimbawa din ng primary source no uh, kaso nga lang kung wala naman itong mga guardia civil na to wala naman silang sinulat tungkol sa pamamalagi do ng isang Jose Rizal malamang hindi natin alam o kaya kahit na may nasulat sila noon ngunit hindi naman nakita ng mga historian o walang nakakita uh, doon sa nasulat no ng guardia no no kung sino man na bumisita nung kay Jose Rizal and definitely historians could not use that as a source because it's nowhere to 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 uh, to, to find, di ba? Unless otherwise, kung mga sa susunod na henerasyon, no, merong makita at yun ay sulat ng isang gwaryo sibil at ito ay, uh, kumbaga, authenticated or meaning to say, if I say authenticated with authenticity, totoo ito and it was recognized by group of historians or organization of historians that these source could be considered as a primary source. So, pwedeng kuha nila na ngayon ng mga historian zone at gagamitin rin nila para tignan kung meron bang nabago sa uh, kwento o kung, kung mare-revise ba ito or hindi kasi nga, in na nila ito as a source of history, di ba? Yun, iti-check nila kung meron mang pagbabago or wala, or to strengthen the previous story of Jose Rizal when he was uh, in the pitan or uh, may nabago. So, yun. Itignan nila o oh, pwedeng gamitin nila ito. Okay? Now, um, next, next na ibig sabihin din ng uh, primary sources ay uh, uh, ay tawag dito. <laughs> Wait. Yung damit ko. Uh, definition of primary sources no? um, these are materials produced by people or groups directly directly involved in the event or topic being studied ulitin natin ha? these are materials produced by people or groups directly involved in the event or topic being studied parang yung pangalawang uh, bullet kanina na if there are things or if there are objects materials that are produced at that time by a person, an individual or a group of individual that were actually present no, uh, on that particular event, then that could be considered as a primary source. Oh, by the way, no disclaimer lang, itong PowerPoint presentation ay some, no, this part of the PowerPoint presentation, kasi buo yan eh, na PowerPoint presentation, I just got uh, the... Uh, the parts na pinag-uusapan lang yung historical sources. So, this was actually taken or obtained from our um, training when we were at the La Salle University uh, main campus in 2016. So, this was actually coming from uh, my uh, our trainer from the La Salle. So, Dr. Erlius, if, I'm, if my memory serves me right. But then, actually, uh, binago ko naman yung uh, template kasi ba yung template na ginamit niya but actually yung kanyang mga bullets ito parehas although dun sa powerpoint presentation na ginawa ko sa buo uh, ibang iba ay injected some kasi may mga nabasa rin ako na libro na from those uh, nilagay ko but on this particular no disclaimer ulit no this particular powerpoint or slides I should say this was actually taken from the presentation of Dr. Aurelius from the Lasalle. Anyways, going back, another definition of primary source, they are either participants or witnesses. So, whether you are a participant or just an, or just an eyewitness of that particular event, then definitely you are considered to be a primary source. So, uh, tatanungin mo lang, ano bang mas matindi? Ikaw na mismong nag-participate nandun sa significant event or you're just a bystander or nakatambay ka lang or, you know, dumaan ka lang 
uh, nakita mo yung event. So, ano yung mas credible kaya na na yung sinasabi nyo tungkol sa event. ba? Diba? So, may tinatawag din natin na degree of uh, being a primary source. So, malamang, kung nandun ka talaga the whole event and you participated from that uh, particular uh, event na pinag-uusapan natin, then mas mataas yung degree of pagiging primary source kaysa yung bystander ka lang or tumambay ka lang doon na hindi mo nakita lahat o kaya napadaan ka lang no hindi mo naman talaga nakita yung buong event okay so there so there's degree also of being a primary source now uh, we also have uh, a definition of primary source which is this the sources uh, primary sources are sources uh, range from eyewitness accounts so kung ano yung nasabi ng isang eyewitness whether you're participant or nakita mo talaga yung pangyayari yung diaries, yung letters, legal documents, and official documents, government or private, and even photographs. So, kahit yung SONA, State of the Nation address ng isang presidente, yan ay masasabi natin na primary source. Pwede rin yung mga jurisprudence na yan uh, from Supreme Court, o mga desisyon galing sa mga korte, those are considered to be primary source. Yung mga deeds, uh, tsaka yung mga last will and testament, those are considered to be primary source. Although, depende naman yun kung ano yung pinag-uusapan natin na event. No? Kung significant event na yan at, well, that uh, among the historians, that is considered to be a, uh, a significant event at yun yung sinusulat nila. So, malamang, hindi naman lahat ng mga ng mga so, uh, lahat ng mga nangyari nung nakaraan, kahit na may mga testimonies, no? hindi nila kukunin lahat yon Ang kukunin lang nila ay yung mga significant sources na uh, from there, from those significant sources, they would have to write, reconstruct, no? reconstruct, reimagine, recreate what had happened in the past. And as I always say, no, history is not the same as the past because uh, yung, mga, yung mga meron lang ng mga historical sources, ito yung mga available lang na nakuha nila. So, we just don't know na kung meron pang ibang mga nakatago o hindi pa natin na unearth or quote-unquote na discover no? meron pa palang mga naisulat noon na hindi pa nakikita. Kaya nga sinasabi natin kung meron mga nabago sa mga historical sources, then definitely there is this probability or possibility na pwedeng mabago kung ano yung nakasulat sa ating kasaysayan. Kaya nga sinasabi natin na history is not absolute. So, another example of primary source para mas maintindihan natin, uh, yun nga, love letter, diary, uh, yung mga manuscript, no, mga pictures or photos na meron nun, yung mga recorded na, let's just say, uh, uh, rec- uh, recorded na uh, interview at that time. So, let's just say, meron ng recorder nung time nung panahon ng ikalawang digmang pandaigdig at na-interview kahit recorder lang yung ano, comfort women or those Filipino people who live at the time of World War II and they, uh, a historian would have to write something about World War II, they could use it. Yung mga video photo just ng uh, uh, ng World War II no? uh, na hindi nakat na hindi anything then that could be considered as a uh, primary source. So, ganun din yung sinabi ko nga, yung mga SONA, yung mga government uh, documents, uh, the legal documents, those are considered to be primary sources. Okay po? So, as is, hindi na bago. Okay? Uh, even uh, artifacts, if we say artifacts, these are the uh, things made by men man-made uh, man-made kasi tong mga to na usually kasi in the context of history ito yung mga bagay na create o minake ng mga o ginawa ng mga tao nung nakaraan kaya yung mga pottery, jewelry, tools, weapons at the time let's just say the pre-Spanish era nakakuha ka ng pottery, jewels, jewelry, um, weapons, um, po, um, tools ng pre-Spanish era, then those are considered to be primary sources because those are artifacts. <clears throat> okay? Now, next. Next po. 
Yan. So, yung pangalanawa naman, it's secondary sources. So, ano yung secondary sources? Secondary sources, uh, from this um, slide, uh, a secondary source interprets and analyzes primary sources. These sources are one or more steps removed from the event. Another one coming from Princeton.edu. Uh, secondary sources, um, ito, this I think is the one that I also added. Uh, so, I... Uh, put it there, I included there where I obtain it. So, secondary sources may have pictures, quotes, or graphics of primary sources in them. Um, unahin muna natin dun sa first bullet. Pag sinabi lang natin na secondary sources, you uh, are trying to interpret. The, if there is already an interpretation, you analyze that particular source and that particular source that I'm telling you, it's the primary source. If there is already an interpretation from that primary source and you you write it down or you could record it uh, yourself basing from those uh, primary sources, then that is considered to be a secondary source. And one great example of a secondary source, these are has, has <laughs> history textbooks. Bakit? Kasi yung mga author, even the historian, Pag nagsulat na sila ng kwento ng nakaraan, sila ay gumamit ng mga primaryang batis or the primary sources. Yung mga sinabi ko kanina, manuscripts or mga testimonies ng mga eyewitnesses, tapos sinulat nila sa isang libro or whatever, na, mga letter, sa mga diaries, sa mga photos, ba Doon sa mga legal documents at the time, nakuha, nakuha nila yon nakalap na nila yon yung mga primary sources. At yun ngayon, ang gangamitan ng mga historian, para i-connecta lahat at mag-create sila ng kwento, big picture, out of those uh, primary sources that they obtain. Then, uh, ang, ang, uh, yung, yung fruit no, ng kanilang pag-connecta, connecting the dots, all those sources that they've used, and they recreated, reconstructed a story of what had happened in the past then that story of them, that is considered to be a secondary source. Kaya yung libro na yon, history textbook na yan, or kahit na anong history book na yan, na yan ay sinulat ng isang historian, that is considered to be a secondary source. Why? Because there's already an interpretation. The historian analyzed, and from that analysis, evaluation, nagsulat na yun siya, ng uh, kwento nung nakaraan gamit yung mga primary sources o gamit yung primaryang batis okay? so uh, if there is uh, the process of analysis and interpretation from the primary sources no, that is considered to be a secondary source okay now siguro para mas madali yung ngayon paano ba natin masasabi na there is a a secondary source. So, sabihin natin may nangyaring event sa barangay ninyo, tapos uh, uh, ang eyewitness yung mami mo, nanay mo, kaya mama mo, or your parents mo, or even your siblings. If they witness that event, that particular barangay event na considered to be significant, then your family member or members could be considered as a primary source. Okay? Now, hearing all the stories of what had happened in that barangay from you know, from your family members. Ngayon, nag-rant ka or nag uh, nag tea time ka pag sinabing tea time. Tea time kasi sa online slang, it's a story or a situation that you would like to share. So, it's a tea time or a story. Nag-post ka ngayon sa FB mo. So, dun sa FB mo, nagkwento ka tungkol sa nangyari. So, yung lahat ng sinabi mo doon, sa FB mo or sa kung ano mang social media that is considered already as a secondary source pag nabasa ng audience mo or ng mga readers mo o, o yan, ng mga readers mo dun sa Facebook mo. So, kunwari, ako nakita ko yung storya mo na yung storya mo yon nakabase dun sa kwento ng mga uh, family members mo kasi sila yung primary sources mo. Ngayon ikaw, nag-interpreta ka, nagsulat ka. So, base dun sa mga sinabi sa'yo, that is already considered a secondary source. Okay po? So, there. And, uh, nakalagay din dito, in secondary sources, usually, 
meron din mga primary sources na nandun. So, kaya titignan natin, di ba, yung textbook, sabi natin, one great example of a secondary source, it's a, a history textbook. Kaya, pag titignan mo, yung mga Philippine history textbook natin, when you were in elementary, high school, and even college, no, ngayon, kung meron, li, meron kayong libro or course module, meron dun mga nakalagay na, ano, na mga, mga images or photos and even pwede ring mga quote na galing sa mga heroes natin doon but kadalasan these are the photos or images long time ago so if you would have to see let's just say pre-spanish era and you saw yung mga remains ng ano ng mga weapons, tools, jewelry, potteries before and even yung mga balangay diba na na nanahukay nila tas merong mga remains dun sa National Museum marami dun so those are considered to be uh, uh, primary sources at yun nakikita rin natin may mga images di ba yun nakikita natin dun sa Philippine History Textbook natin na yung Philippine History Textbook as a whole that is considered to be secondary source but then as I told you even in secondary source nandun naka-include yung iba't ibang halimbawa ng primary sources. So, an example could be a letter, could be um, a poem written by, let's just say, those person who were um, who were um, considered to be our heroes and that is considered to be significant in the narrative of uh, uh, the story of our country. Photos, images, yun. Yung mga nandun, those are considered to be primary sources. Okay, but then again, going back, if we say secondary sources, this is just an interpretation of uh, the primary sources. So, once that you interpreted, you analyzed uh, already the primary sources and you would have to write something or say something about it. That is already a primary source. So, parang ako, pag nagbasa ako ng, let's just say, poem or nagbasa ako ng letter, ni Andres Monifacio kay Emilio Asinto. Di ba? Uh, pag binasa ko yon, that, uh, pag binasa ko, that particular uh, letter, wala akong dagdag, wala akong dinagdag, wala akong binawas, then that is considered to be a primary source. Kahit na binasa ko lang. But when, if I say something about it, if I discuss something about it, uh, what could I say to that letter uh, from Andres Bonifacio to Emilio Jacinto, then there is already an interpretation. So, what I am telling you, what am I discussing you, if you are on that topic, that is considered to be a secondary source. Okay? So, yun. Next. Yeah. Examples of secondary sources, as I told you. Uh, Okay, examples of secondary sources. So, we have history textbook, as I told you a while back, a great example of secondary source. And another one, printed materials or serials, periodicals, which interprets previous research. Kaya yung kaya sinasabi nila yung mga scholarly journals, those are also considered to be secondary source. Uh, ganun din yung mga, ano, mga newspaper, di ba? May mga newspaper articles and even the comment section, editorial those are considered to be secondary sources. Pero depende ha, kasi pwede naman, uh, baka you might ask me, um, what if it is uh, a newspaper, La Solidaridad? This is actually the newspaper of the propaganda movement or the reform movement. Paano kung ano ma'am, ginamit ko yung La Solidaridad na yon? At ang topic ko ay gusto kong alamin kung... Uh, uh, kung saan nang galing o ano yung mga importanteng topics na pinag-uusapan ng La Solidaridad and I have handful of uh, primary sources of La Solidaridad La Solidaridad uh, is that La, Solar La Solidaridad a newspaper could it be considered a primary or secondary that is a primary source lalo tiget ng topic nyo po ay ang tungkol sa la yung uh, yung topics the main topics of la solidaridad so using those la solidaridad na meron ka then that could be considered as a primary source and that is not secondary source so paano magiging um, secondary source ang newspaper kung ang newspaper ngayon 
ang pinag-uusapan natin. Tapos, meron kang nakitang article sa newspaper about La Solidaridad. At the main topics of La Solidaridad. Then, that particular newspaper having that kind of article, kahit ang pinag-uusapan ay main topics of La Solidaridad during uh, that time, during panahon ni Jose Rizal, and that is considered to be a secondary source. Why? Because there is already an interpretation from the author of that news article. Alright? So, yun po. Then, yeah. So, uh, ito lang ha, last na, last lang, uh, bago tayo end natin ito. So, this is actually a painting of Tizian. I got it uh, from Google Image. Uh, disclaimer, hindi ko painting to. Nakuha ko lang po sa Google Image. Shout out po sa Google Image. <laughs> Then, the title of this uh, painting by Tizian, I don't know if I pronounce it correct, Tizian, the, uh, the title is Adam and Eve, and the date that was painted, it's circa 1550. Could this be painting, uh, ang title ay Adam and Eve, could be considered as a primary source? Kung ang kwento natin ay patungkol kay Adan at Eva. Hmm, sige nga, try to defend. Is this primary? or secondary. Could it be primary or could it also be secondary? Sige nga. So, habang iniisip nyo, patugtog tayo. So, siguro medyo na-justify nyo na ngayon, no? But, uh, uh, let me say this to you. It's actually on how you treat or how you use this, this source. Uh, this could be used as a primary source, but this could also be used as a secondary source. But it cannot be both, okay? Now, why did I say that it could be considered as a secondary source? It could be uh, a secondary source if your topic is about... Um, you know, the story of Adam and Eve. Okay? Bakit secondary source? Kasi si Tithian naman, did he witness, I assume that he's a guy, ha, si Tithian. Um, did he witness the story uh, of Adam and Eve? Nandun ba siya nung uh, ang kwento, ang event, past event, na sinasabi natin ay si Adam and Eve? Wala siya, di ba? So, yung kanyang pinaint dito this is just his interpretation kasi malamang sa malamang nabasa siya ng Bible meron siyang alam tungkol sa Bible at uh, sabihin natin or yeah na, may alam sa Bible it could be he read the Bible or because of the education that he had and he knew the story of Adam and Eve that's why he had this painting of uh, Adam and Eve Okay, so that is his interpretation of Adam and Eve. So, that is a secondary source. Now, when can we say that this is a primary source? Again, depende po kung paano natin ito gamitin. Kung ginamit natin ito at ang kwento natin na pinapalabas ay ang buhay ni Tithian. Diba? The story of Tithian. Esha or biography of Tithian. Diba? or even kung siya nagsulat ng kanyang buhay the autobiography tas nilagay niya rin ito as his painting one of his uh, paintings then this painting could be considered as a primary source kung ang pinag-uusapan ay yung buhay niya diba? or pwede rin ang topic natin ano yung mga ano yung main theme nung panahon ng 16th century main theme ng painting nung 16th century okay So, pwede ang main theme dahil sa nakikita natin na Adam and Eve at na nakita ka rin ng mga paintings ng panahon ng 16th century ay nakafocus ito sa religious. Then, we could say that uh, because of the painting of Titian and the other painters at that time, the main theme, the interpretation of the historian or the one who would be interpreting, the main theme of the historian or the main theme of the um, of, of painting during the 16th century, it's religious. So, pwedeng gamitin natin ito as primary source. So, again, ulitin natin ha, ang isang source, pwede mong gamitin niya na primary 
or even secondary it depends on uh, the uh, the uh, particular event that you would like to to unravel or to write i should say and there are also primary sources na that source could be significant to another significant event but that source or primary source kahit the primary source eh hindi naman siya significant dun sa topic na pinag-uusapan like um, why would you be using those primary sources in a pre-Spanish and pinag-uusapan ay American period unless otherwise there is a connection diba? pero kadalasan naman wala so you cannot consider those sources nung pre-Spanish sa sources sa American Okay? But anyways, ang mas pinag-uusapan lang naman natin dito, it's the uh, the historical sources that uh, historians usually use. We have primary, uh, an account of an eyewitness or a testimony of uh, an eyewitness. Yung nandun ka mismo, nakita, nakita nila mismo, nag-participate sila. Um... At yung secondary source naman, ito ay interpretasyon nun sa mga naka-witness nung account. Okay? So, there's already an interpretation based from the primary sources that they've read or that they've, uh, they've watched or that they've heard or that they've tasted or that they've touched. Diba? So, yun po ang secondary sources. Okay? Uh, di ba kayo naintriga uh, creation of Adam and Eve to pero bakit may belly button <laughs> siguro naman alam yun ang ibig sabihin <laughs> kasi may belly button kung creation yun bakit may belly button okay so there um, ano ba ayan pag-usapan lang natin ano ba ang importansya ngayon at nalaman natin kung ano ang ang historical sources. Um, importante kasi rin ito, hindi lang sa mga historian. So, kahit din tayo as a student, as a citizen of this country, as a citizen of the world, as a friend, um, if we would have to, if we would be presented, let's say stories of people, whether it is in, in text, in, in what we've heard, we have to make sure that the source uh, the source that uh, is actually telling us so if the source is telling us let's just say nabasa natin sa fb yung source na yon yung news na yon sumi natin maniniwala na ba tayo kagad of course not unless otherwise if that particular source is credible accurate reasonable and it has support then pwede tayong makinig or maniwala sa kanila but sometimes kahit di ba uh, ang media na, mainstream media na ang nagsasabi sa atin uh, minsan nga hindi na rin tayo naniniwala, bakit? kasi nga mapapansin ng mga tao na may bias ang mainstream media, I'm not saying that all of them or I'm not saying that they are really Pero ang napapansin kasi natin, ang naobserbahan natin, may mga ganun na na sitwasyon na parang ang tingin natin, they're being manipulated. Hindi naman siguro manipulated. They're not telling everything. Okay? Especially if they are connected or if they're friends with politicians. So, if we see or people would have to feel and see um, and conclude that they have these biases, then people uh, would not believe on them already. Okay? Kaya, mangyayari, mag-resort sila, o mag-resort sila, resort, resort sila sa ibang mga news information. So, which source? Pwede social media at sa tingin nila, yun yung kapanipaniwala. O there's a person or vlog or influencer that they think that uh, for them, it is something that is credible, no? And, you know, they're, lalo na kung yung kanilang iniisip, it aligned with what the influencer, the vlogger, or whoever that person is actually uh, saying something on social media, they would have to believe. Diba? Kaya, ang sinasabi natin dito, 
kung meron man makita tayo, mabasa tayo, may ma- marinig tayo, may mapanood tayo, we should be doubtful. Uh, lalo na kung ka-doubt, ka-doubtful, doubtful yon. So, we have to inquire. Sabi nga natin, history is an inquiry. We have to inquire. So, titingnan natin yung source natin. Kung yan ay primary or secondary. Kung primary nun, nandun sila. Diba? Secondary, it's just an interpretation. O sabihin natin, hindi ko naman sinasabi, pag secondary source, hindi mo na paniniwalaan. Paniwalaan mo rin, but you have to be vigilant. You have to evaluate. You have to assess. Um, you have to make sure that that particular secondary source, whether primary or secondary source, uh, it's credible and reliable. Okay, kahit primary source yan, nakita niya yung event. Titignan mo yung me- uh, motive, the intended function of that particular, I mean that re- reading material. What do you think is the intended uh, function? What do you think is the motive of that author? Kaya titignan mo rin yung author eh, kung sino man yung nagsabi noon or nagsulat noon. Kasi knowing the background of the author, you would assess or evaluate if he or she has this bias or heavily biased. Diba sabi nga natin, pag bias yan, normal naman yan. Diba? Obviously, we have our own uh, biases. But if that is heavily biased compared to other authors who's telling that particular event, then you would have to resort with this other, other author than the other one which you think is heavily biased. Kaya ganyan pa importante ang sources. Kasi yan yung ano mo eh, ebidensya mo at sasabihin mo, ya assess mo, ya evaluate mo, ya analyze mo na yun talaga ang totoo. Kaya uh, ang importante dito, wag rin tayong maniniwala agad-agad sa mga sinasabi. Lalo ngayon, there is proliferation of fake news. Uh, misinformation, disinformation man yan. Kailangan natin Uh, knowing these sources, kailangan natin na scrutinize. We have to investigate our sources. In investigating our sources, the consequence would be the decision that we would be making upon upon the scrutiny and upon the investigation of our sources. If we've done this, we could have a better judgment. If that particular source could be considered as a credible source. Okay po. So, yun po ang ating topic ngayon. It's historical sources. Aha. Okay, ito na. <laughs> so, ito lang po ang ating uh, diskusyon o paksa ngayong uh, araw na to o ang gabi na to. Uh, historical sources and the two Uh, classifications of historical sources we have primary sources the testimony of an eyewitness account or testimony of an eyewitness I should say or an eyewitness account and if you say uh, uh, secondary source this is mainly an interpretation analysis of uh, the author or the historian based from or coming from the primary sources okay and one great example of that as I told you is Philippine history textbook. Kaya yun po nga yun po. So sana may napag-aralan po tayo, naintindihan po tayo sa leksyon o sa paksa nating ginawa. So uli and muli, we have to we have to we have to stay empowered, stay enlightened, and as always It's always cool to be learning. And this is Angel Shares again. Rags up. Please subscribe. Love you all. Bye.